Getting to world, Know the World's Greatest Artists, Alexander Calder, written and illustrated by Mike Venezia. Alexander Calder was born in Lawton, Pennsylvania in 1898. From the time he was a little boy, he was fascinated by the stars and planets and how machines worked. Alexander Calder invented a brand new, fun and exciting art using the things that interested him. Alexander, who was always called Sandy by his friends and family, was best known for his moving sculptures called mobiles. Sandy usually made his mobiles out of abstract metal shapes and painted them with his favorite colors. Sandy also made sculptures that stood still. These were called stables. Some stables are as tall as buildings. Sandy Calder grew up in the perfect family in which to be an artist. Both his father and grandfather were famous sculptors and his mother was an excellent painter. Mr. and Mrs. Calder had lots of artist friends too. Sandy got used to having artists around all the time. At a very early age, he was able to see how paintings and sculptures were created. There's the mother painting. And so the brave knight saved the princess just in the nick of time. It's the dad sculpting a dragon. Wow, mom and dad, that was a great bedtime sculpture and painting. How about one more? The Calder family moved all over the United States while Sandy and his older sister Peggy were growing up. They had to be near the cities and towns where Mr. Calder found work creating sculptures. Wherever they moved, Sandy kept busy making toys for himself and Peggy. He found old buttons, cloth, bits of string and wire and used them to make all kinds of things. Sandy and Peggy had lots of pets to play with too. Once while they were living in a desert area out west, Sandy made carts out of matchboxes and harnesses out of string. He hooked them up to desert animals he and Peggy found and raced them. Sandy Calder made clever toys, gadgets, and gifts for people all through his grade school and teenage years. He decided to study engineering in college where he learned about designing engines and machines. After college, Sandy tried all kinds of jobs, but none of them worked out. He ended up moving in with his parents who were living in New York City at the time. One evening, just for fun, Sandy made a mask out of paper and yarn and put it on the family cat, turning it into a ferocious lion. Mr. Calder, who was worried about his son's future, thought Sandy was wasting his time. He strongly suggested that Sandy start doing something to improve his mind right away. <laughs> to please his father, Sandy decided to take drawing lessons. Soon he discovered he loved to draw. It wasn't long before he became interested in painting too. Sandy Collar went all over New York City drawing and painting city scenes. His favorite subjects were the animals in the Central Park Zoo. When Sandy was 25 years old, he made up his mind to be a full-time artist. He was good enough now to get a job as an illustrator for an important magazine. One of his first assignments was to make drawings of the circus that came to New York. As a kid, Sandy always liked going to the circus, but now he got a chance to see things up close. Sandy was fascinated by how the trapeze rigs and safety nets worked. He got to meet clowns and acrobats and saw lions and tigers being trained. The circus inspired many of Sandy's later works of art. Once they knew Sandy was serious about his decision to become an artist, Mr. and Mrs. Calder did everything they could to help their son. They encouraged him and helped raise enough money to send him to Paris, France, which was a great place for artists to be. In 1926, Sandy left for his first trip to Paris. At that time, painters and sculptors and actors, musicians and writers went to Paris to study and see what other artists were doing. Sandy got a small apartment and took a drawing class soon after he arrived. In his spare time, just for fun, he started making circus characters out of wire, cloth, corks, and string. What are the circuses? Most of the little circus figures Sandy could act, made could actually do things. Acrobats could swing around and balance on the high wire. Trapeze artists flew through the air and hooked onto their partners. There were clowns, a sword swallower, and a lion tamer too. Sandy made everything work with wire, string, cranks, and springs. At first, Sandy put shows on for a few friends. Then more and more people showed up at his apartment. Everyone loved Sandy's sense of humor and the way he made his circus work. It was kind of like watching a three-dimensional cartoon show. Soon Sandy became interested in making three-dimensional figures out of wire. 
Sandy liked working with wire. It was something he had been using ever since he was a kid when he made all those toys for his friends and family. Some of the people who came to see Sandy's circus were already becoming famous artists. A few of these artists thought Calder's wire sculptures were great. They introduced Sandy to gallery owners and helped him get his first sculpture show in Paris. The show was a big hit. Two of the artists who helped Sandy Calder and influenced him a lot were Jean Moreau and Piet Mondrian. Sandy liked the colorful blobs and squiggly shapes in Moreau's paintings. He loved Mondrian's neat mechanical lines and pure colors. One day while visiting Mondrian's studio, Sandy got a great idea. Mondrian had, colored, had lots of colored cardboard rectangles tacked up on his wall. Sandy thought it would be fun if those colored shapes could move around through space somehow. To make his idea come alive, he started making mechanical sculptures that moved with electric motors and cranks. Sandy's mechanical sculptures were a big hit too, especially with his artist friends, but Sandy wasn't quite satisfied with them. For one thing, they always repeated the same action over and over. Sandy thought his sculptures should be more interesting. Another problem was that they kept breaking down whenever Sandy had a show. Sandy always brought tools and supplies along to fix them. Soon he had an idea that was really new and different. He decided to make sculptures that floated in space naturally whenever a breeze came along. These were the first mobiles. Many of Sandy's mobiles were based on images from the solar system. They fit in perfectly with the times. In the 1930s, everyone was becoming interested in outer space. The planet Pluto had just been discovered. It was the biggest news in years. People were curious to know what else might be discovered in space. They talked about the possibility of space travel and wondered if alien creatures lived on other planets. Calder's mobiles are amazingly fun to look at. They keep surprising you by dancing around and changing position all the time. You can blow on some of them to help make them move. Some of Calder's mobiles are small enough to hold in your hand, while others weigh thousands of pounds. Sandy Calder's stables, stables are surprising too. Even though they're abstract shapes, they often remind people of gigantic insects, birds, or prehistoric animals. It's fun to walk around under a huge stable. It kind of makes you feel like you're in a strange world full of giant creatures. Sandy Calder kept busy throughout his whole life working on all kinds of projects. Besides creating his famous sculptures, he was known for his paintings and drawings too. He designed wallpaper, rugs, kitchen utensils, jewelry, and sets for plays. He even designed toys that were manufactured by a big toy company. By the time Alexander Sandy Calder died in 1976, he'd become one of the most famous artists of the 20th century. His idea of making fun, colorful shapes move naturally in the air changed the way people thought about sculpture forever.